during the budget process, I feel like you're sending a message by sitting up here beyond just what you've said, which is teamwork. Can you talk about what message you're trying to send by being together here today? Well, I, we're trying to say we're all going to work together on this, that there's no you know, daylight between us. There's no denying head in the sand approach on the, on the revenue challenges. But we're also saying that the, the state is in pretty good shape. I mean, you know, excellent shape. 460,000 job growth, as Cliff points out, you know, when it comes to highways, uh, because of the work we did uh, with the um, uh, bonding against the turnpike, when my term is over, we'll have about a 30% increase in spending. You all know it. You see the orange barrels out there. You see the construction, the construction jobs. What's really pretty remarkable is even though we, ex we are experiencing this slowdown in revenue, and these numbers will go up and down, the fact that we continue to see job growth is, uh, is really such a positive thing. So, you know, the slowdown is, it's going to happen. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. It's just how you deal with it. You don't get too carried away with the ups. And uh, that's why we put stuff away in a rainy day fund. And you don't get too down when, you know, when you have some challenges. There. And, and I think the fact that we're all up here together shows that uh, we all recognize that this is a serious issue. We're all committed to making sure that we deal with it. Uh, and we all believe that it's uh, something that can be dealt with. Uh, it, it'll be a difficult budget process, but uh, I think you know, some of us have been saying that for at least five or six months, and it shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody. Uh, but, uh, but the House, the Senate, uh, the Governor all recognize the challenges that we face, and uh, we're going to roll up our sleeves, we're going to get to work, and we're going to take care of it. Have you all agreed that the rainy day fund will not be used? Look, we, we don't think you use a rainy day fund to write a budget. I mean, that, that would be what some people would do, because then they don't have to make any choices. Uh, the rainy day fund should be used in the middle of the fiscal year to put out fires. And, uh, you know, you, you don't want to be frittering away. You know, we've been calls by many people to use it for this and that. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. And so you don't want to construct a budget based on a fund that is, is there to put out a fire. So if we get into 18 or 19, we, if we can have some money in there, we'll help people to, uh, to shoulder things since it, if you have a storm that comes and is worse. Uh, but it doesn't make any sense to do that, and the answer is no. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, do you second that? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, we're going to continue. First and foremost, we got, we're going to shore up the foundation. Part of that's ensuring we have a strong rainy day fund. Um, and to the earlier answer, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, it's kind of common sense. We're all here because we want to see Ohio be strong. Uh, I mean, we want to make sure we continue to put the state in a pathway that we continue to grow jobs, let businesses continue to expand, let entrepreneurs to do their thing, ensure we have good schools. And uh, part of that is to ensure that as a team, as we have for over now six years, uh, continue to advance that. But uh, make no mistake. You can't, you can't do that without ensuring you have a strong, firm foundation. That rainy day fund is important to that. Two more questions. How, Speak. how Speak. confident are you that you've got your arms around the problem here? 400 is the right number. You're not going to come in with another surprise. We're going to deal with what comes. You know, revenues are a projection. Let me ask you a question. Who's projected any of this correctly? I don't mean here. I mean across the country. Take a look at what the astrologers projected here for economic growth in this year. I'm sorry, the economists. They were all dead wrong. And part of what we went through is Tim, you know, who deals with the astrologers on a regular basis, sometimes can get moved in their direction. But I got a guy who works with me, Wayne Struble. We've been doing this for almost 30 years. We go conservative. And we pulled those numbers down to the point where Tim was starting to, to get concerned because they were way lower than what the what the astrologers had been projecting. And so what we're going to do is look at the, at the numbers as they come. And uh, if it means we have to do more, we'll do more. It's not, look, at the end, end of it all, the all funds budget is still going to have slight growth. Now, I hope it doesn't have to go lower than that. But if we, if, let me, let me tell you what the reality of the, of the situation is. First of all, uh, the idea that we shouldn't help small businesses and, you know, they're the engine of economic growth is just foolhardy. Secondly, these folks in New York, these rating agencies, they watch everything we do. If you don't have a structurally balanced budget, they start to reduce your credit. That is the first step to being Illinois, where businesses can't get out of there fast enough. Or Connecticut, where we get a call today, a guy wants to move his whole company. 
So we have to deal with that. And um, at the same time, we also want to have an environment where people will continue to come. Here's, the, here's really the good news about all this. When people see that a government can deal with challenges, they're impressed. Because you know what? Most government doesn't deal very well with challenges. They either put their head in the sand, they run away, they take the easy way out. We're not going to do that. And as a result of it, it sends a message about the strength and the resilience of a state that can bounce back from an $8 billion hole and have a $2 billion surplus and be up hundreds of thousands, almost a half a million jobs and, and, uh, and, and record kinds of tax cuts. So we just, uh, this is an opportunity uh, it may be a challenge. It's, I also think it's a really good opportunity for Ohio to shine. Just to point out to you because yesterday you asked the first question about this. Okay. Um, so all three of you talked about the importance of fighting Ohio's drug battle. 